Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, this time I want to talk a little bit about uh, Clip Studio Paint and how I use it to set up pages and basically create borders very, very easily. It's a great resource, a great tool, and I use it for all of my comic pages. So let me just kind of dive in and show you how it works. What we've got on screen now is the basic page setup I use for uh, my comics. I've got my width and my height of my whole page set to uh, 7 by 10.75. I've got uh, my resolution at 1200 DPI because a lot of comic artists will kind of work at double size at 300 to 600 DPI, but I just work at size at 600 to 1200 DPI, which is sort of six one half dozen the other. So same sort of difference, same amount of pixels, same amount of information that go into that. My binding finish size is a pretty standard American comic size. I got 6.625 is actually the uh, standard American comic size width, but Clip doesn't let you do those many digits. So 6.63 is what we use. My height at 10.25. And then I set my bleed width at 0.13. I kind of like it at more at 0.125. But again, Clip doesn't let you do that. So you can see over here, that's where that kind of ends up. So you got uh, this, you see these two guys here, those are the crop marks. And then this here is where that bleed would uh, stretch out to. So you kind of have a good idea of that. Then what uh, the, the meat and potatoes of this guy is the uh, default inner border size. And that's what's going to create this inner border right here. Uh, what's going to happen there is it'll create sort of a special ruler in there that lets you then snap your borders really easily to that spot. So they're consistent from page to page. It's really, really handy. Uh, I've already set this up, as you can see. So all, all these pages, I've got my multiple pages set at 22. So it's made all these pages over here. So I'm going to just cancel this because that's what uh, if I hit OK, it would make this again. Now we're in here. We've got this beautiful, uh, you know, blank page. All right, what do you do? Over here on the side, you've got the Create Frame tool. Click on that or press U to get to the frame border. And it'll give you a couple different options. It'll probably look something like this. To make up uh, some panel borders, they're pretty easy. All you have to do is click on that and make sure you're under the rectangle frame. And all this stuff uh, looks like this. Draw a border, you know, put a roster layer in there, fill inside the frame. And then I set my brush size at 24, which would be the thickness of that border. Uh, what we do is you just kind of grab here. And if you've got these uh, selected, I don't remember which one it is, but it's one of these two. I think it's the special rulers, which is the two. Uh, or if you don't have this up here, you can also hit view and either snap to ruler or snap to special ruler. And you just click on this corner and it'll get pretty close to that and drag down to the other corner and that will snap uh, directly to there. So I can get, it's got a little bit of wiggle room, but it'll let you do that. So that's gonna do, it's gonna create this nice panel uh, for your whole page. Uh, and also inside of that panel, it'll create a roster layer, which is this guy, layer two. And then the frame background, which is just this white layer behind that. The benefit of this, of course, is that you've got the black outline. And also if you uh, draw in this layer, it will not let you draw outside of it, which is great. So it keep, keeps your borders nice and clean. So if you had another layer like this guy above it, you see above it, but then if you grab this guy and put it inside of it, it would cut that off. If you put it below it, it would also cut it off, but because of this frame background right there. So that's a pretty easy thing to do. The next step is, of course, you, you, know, you want panels, and you don't want your panels necessarily to just be one giant panel every page, so you want to divide your panels up. So you go back to your uh, frame border tool here, and you can cut frame borders right here so you probably uh, if you've just opened clip have this unchecked and it'll give you these random uh horizontal and vertical spaces these are very small so i never really use these so you can adjust them here or what i like to do is i like to adjust them in the preferences so if you go to the clip uh, clip studio paint up here and click pe preferences uh, in the layer slash frame area, uh, you can set the horizontal and vertical space of your frame borders. I pulled these numbers from uh, pulling in a Kira page and sort of copying what I think felt about right for the uh, horizontal and vertical spaces, but I think I might have adjusted them since then just to kind of fit what I like. Um, play around with it, see what you like, see what looks good on your comics. If you're liking them the same, make those two numbers the same. If you like them, you know, bigger, smaller, you know, change those numbers around, play with that and try to make it 
how you like it, because then once you have this set, you just have to click space of frame border in preference. And now across all of your pages, the frame borders are going to be consistent. Now we've got that selected and we've got divide by straight line. And we have uh, this here uh, clicked on the far left. Uh, you're ready to go and make some new panel borders. Make sure you have that panel border selected. Grab over here and you can uh, divide this pretty easily. So you can just kind of click and then drag around. And then if you hit hold the shift key, it will automatically snap to uh, 90 and 45 degree angles like that. So you see it creates that guy. And then if you you know wanted to keep going, it'll create that, and that etc. If you want all this stuff to be equidistant, which is nice if you want to, let's say, make a Watchman style nine panel grid, you can go up to layer and say ruler frame and then go down to divide uh, frame border equally and change this uh, to turn on, uh, you know, the vertical number of divisions and the horizontal number of divisions. And now it'll automatically create these nine panels for you out of the one large panel which is great very easy and then of course you can you know grab one of these and draw on that and it won't you know uh, extend past those borders last thing i want to chat about is what happens if you want to uh, sort of create panels that don't have any borders let's say you have sort of a painterly style and want to fill your uh, backgrounds with color but then have that white space in the gutters uh, the space between these panels, you know, just be white and not have any sort of black borders around it. It's really easy to do. So you go back up here to the create frame tool. And all you have to do is turn this draw border off. So that's awesome. So I like to have this fill inside the layer still on if I'm going to work this way. And that way, when I do this, it creates this panel border. Now what's going on here is it creates this purple line, which is essentially this special ruler that's this uh, little blue guy right here. You can turn this on and off by holding the shift key and just clicking it, and I'll turn that on and off. Pretty easy. Um, but so if you wanted to sort of preview what that'll look like, let's say you wanted to paint in there or whatever, uh, you could you know double click on this frame background and change that to a different color. Let's make that sort of a you know medium to light gray um, so you can kind of see how that looks. So now you can see that that's sort of with one color and you can just kind of go through and divide this like you would anything else and it'll kind of create those borders. No problem there. It looks great. Let's say you wanted to work all on one frame or one layer for everything and then have a layer above this that sort of, uh, you know, you can draw a you know, really nice tool that let's say you like you know, want to have that tool be what you use for all the panel borders, right? So like if you have a really nice brush that you want to get that texture for, for all these panel borders, that's really easy to do. All you have to do is do the same thing. So you go down here, create frame and don't have draw border selected, right? You go down here make your full panel border easy, easy as pie. And then you go down here to cut frame border and what you would do is you'd have this one selected. So you divide not the folder, but just the frame border. So now if I go in here, all it's going to do is edit this uh, vector border in here. So I can grab that. It doesn't create a new border. It sort of, sort of keeps this one going. So that's uh, handy if you like to just work on one layer. Now, what's gonna happen if I draw in here and then keep drawing, it's going to kind of show you that it's, oh, it's all of this area, right? So that's kind of interesting, you know, but uh, let's see, turn that back on. You can take a, you know, make a new layer above uh, the, the, the folder here and go in and use that tool you really like. Let's say here, I got this tool. Let's make my, you know, we'll kind of make it a little bit bigger so you can see it. Uh, you can either slide this brush size, you can uh, click these up and down, or you can hit the right bracket key to kind of make this uh, a bigger uh, brush, right? That's gigantic. Maybe I'll make it a little bit smaller. That looks good. If I just draw on this normally, oh, looks like it did it. And there you go, because I have uh, snap to special rulers on. So 
Now I can make these nice panel borders that will be very quickly and easily correct and I'll have that nice sort of texture that uh, that uh, that pencil tool I was using has. So that's a really easy and quick way to sort of make some nice uh, textured borders. Another thing you can do, which is really cool, is if you wanted to move some stuff around. So we got the create frame. Let's make a big frame here. So make a big frame. Looks great. Now I want to divide this frame up. Uh, and I've got my thing there. So I'm going to do a couple of these. And maybe I'll take this. Oops, I'm going to turn, undo this. I want to make these all different folders. So I'm going to change that back to my dividing method of folders. So I'll grab a couple of these. Um, oops, one too many. That looks good. Yeah. All right. Now let's say I like this this big guy in the middle looks pretty cool, but I want it to be um, really impactful. So I want to make it really big and sort of behind all of these. So what I can do is drag this layer down below all of these guys, and I can uh, then go to this tool, the uh, object tool up here. And what that will do, and normally this is checked on. So if I grab this here and slide it around, it will retain these gutters right here and move it all around, which is pretty handy. If you, So I'm going to grab this and move it down. That can be handy in a lot of situations, but that's not what we want to do right now. What we want to do is have this layer kind of go behind these. So all you have to do is turn off the work with other frame borders and grab this and slide it around. So it goes behind these, grab that, pull it down. Looks great. Another thing you can do is click these little arrows. That's going to do It's going to snap this to like the next available point, which is going to be the end of there. So now you got this guy, and that looks pretty cool. It looks like a pretty cool comic page. Like, you know that some big stuff's happening in this, and some, you know, uh, surrounding things are happening in these. These panels around here. Uh, you can also then, you know, if you wanted to grab, let's say, this guy uh, here. Uh, since I've got this work with other frame borders turned off, make that maybe a little bit smaller. Make this one maybe a little bit bigger some of this stuff. Now on these guys, if I was like, oh man, I want to grab this guy and this guy, but I want them to be the same, right? I want to move both of these up. Now I could recheck, work with another frame borders, and slide this guy, and both of them will come together, which is really handy. That's some pretty basic overview. If you got any more questions about panel borders or Clip Studio Paint, just leave them below in the comments. Uh, I'll try to make a video on that or just respond to you if it's something pretty easy. But yeah, thanks so much for watching. That's all I got. Take care.